All right, here we are. Question number two. This is your homework from 2018, the actual question. Let's do it together. I hope you do it first. I really do. That you practice first, and then you're going to check to see if you did it right. Number two means we're using our calculator. So we're going to type this in first. So take out your calculator. And I'm going to act like I'm going to graph it and press. And I'm going to delete what I have. In fact, I'm going to go Menu, Actions, Delete All. And then I can start from scratch and then press Tab and then start typing. So I'm going to go Control, Divide, and then type in 10 sine 0.4. Remember, I'm going to use x squared and then x squared, subtract x, subtract 3, well, plus 3. And double check that you type it in right. So 10 sine 0.4 x squared, x squared take away x plus 3. Answer. Is there another equation right now? Nope, it's all that equal. Well, there's another one down here. When we get there, I'll put it in. All right, so now go back to calculate. Now we can just think, okay, well, how are we going to do it? So, doo -doo -doo. all right, so find the acceleration. So I know the velocity. How do you find acceleration? Is you take the derivative at 3. And then we're going to type it in. So I'm going to go menu, uh, calculus, derivative at a point, and the value is at 3. And then just type in F1 at X. And there you go. Done. That likely give you a point. B, find the position of the particle at t equals 3. So to find the position at 3, the particle has a position at negative 5 and starting at 0 up to 3. So we're going to integrate the velocity. We don't need to retype all of that in. Here we're showing. We start at negative 5. We're going to integrate from 0 to 3, the velocity, and now type it in. Again, that's F1 at X. So it's negative 1.760. Part C. Uh, evaluate the velocity from there and evaluate the absolute value. Interpret the meaning of both. So. I'm going to do that down here. So if I evaluate from 0 to 3.5, so menu integral, calculus integral, from 0 to 3.5, F1, so I get 2. Point 843. Then I'm going to do the same thing, but the absolute value to so press that button to get the absolute value, the, the button beside the number 9. And then again, F1 at X. And then how would you interpret it? And so this number and really we can talk about the net distance or we can talk about the displacement. So the distance traveled from 0 to 3.5 
Did they even give you? No. So they didn't give you any units. And then how about this one? This is the keyword, the total distance. So what is the absolute value of velocity? Notice how it shows up again and again and again. The total distance from traveled from t equals 0 to t equals 3.5. But the key distinction is this one is total distance and this one's not. Okay, part D. So we have a second particle along the with this position. At what time are the two particles moving with the same velocity? Okay, so first of all, that's position. So velocity, I would first have to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of this position is 2t minus 1. And then we're going to write an equation and use our calculator. So we're going to use an equation. And I'm not going to rewrite all of that in, but you know you're going to make an equation that they are equal to each other and then solve it. So how would I solve that equation when the velocity is equal? So I took the velocity. So I'm going to go menu algebra solve. And I'm going to type in 2t subtract 1 equals, and again, it's going to go f1 at x, and then I'm going to go comma x, and that's it. Oops, what happened here? Oh, what, what are we doing here? 2t minus 1. So why is it not giving me a decimal answer? Oh, I know why it's not. Huh? I changed the variable. So I did t for one, and I did x for the other. Well, that's silly. So change this to x. At least I know what I did wrong. And now do it. Oh, time's ticking away. Hmm. And you get 1.570. That's it. You did it. That's all the parts. All right, can you do the next one for me? But I really want you to do it. If all you do is copy my video, it's no good. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to try first and then learn from it. But you got to try it first. So press pause. Try this one first. No calculator. It's number five. And see how you do. Okay, here we go. From 0 to 8, when is the particle moving left? How do I know when it's moving left? It's velocity. So this is not velocity. So i got to first find the velocity equation. So I'm going to go v, and I'm going to take the derivative. Ln means a fraction. Copy goes in the denominator. And then the derivative of that goes in the numerator. Then I make it equal to 0. Now I need to know two things. I need to know where it's undefined and solve it. So I'm going to factor the numerator and denominator. So if I factor the numerator, this is what I get. If I factor the denominator, it's, mm, does the bottom factorable? I thought it was, right? 5 and 2 do not make 2. No, it's not factorable. So we're going to stick to that. So we're going to stick to when t equals 1, because I can't see where it's undefined there. So it's not factorable. So I'm just going to say that was when t equals 1. So that comes from the numerator. And then you would draw a number line, right, for 1. So we draw a number line. Only 1 is the only critical number for the velocity. And then into the velocity, I plug in. If I plug in a negative number, or 0 even, I get a negative over a positive. And if I plug in 2, I get a positive over a positive. So when is it moving to the left? And it's right here. It's moving from the left from negative infinity up to 1. Did you get that one right? Oh, and I made a mistake. It's from 0 to 8. 
So from 0 to 8, when is it moving to the left? So the answer isn't this. From 0 to 8, the answer is just from 0 to 1. And then from 1 through 8, it's moving to the right. From 0 to 8, all times which the two particles travel in the same direction. So I have two equations. So the second particle, I already know the velocity. Let me do that down here. I'm going to factor it right away. This one is factorable. So it's negative 3 and negative 5. They multiply to 15 and add uh, to negative 8. So we have two number lines from 0 to 8. So we have this one from 0 to 8 with 3 and 5. So if I put in positive 1, it's a negative times a negative. If I put in 4, it's a positive times a negative. And if I plug in 6, it's a positive times a positive. And then the second number line I just did, so this is the velocity for Q. This is the velocity for P, right? So again, it goes from 0 to 8. It was 1, and it was just negative and positive. And then the question is, when is they what? When are they going in the same direction? All right, let's go. From 0 to 1, not the same direction. From 1 to 3, yes. So from 1 to 3, they're going in the same direction. How about from 3 to 5? No, because it's negative. How about 5 to 8? Positive and positive. So the two times they are moving in the same direction is 1 to 3 and 5 to 8. Done. Part C. Find the acceleration of the particle at Q when T equals 2. So acceleration is the derivative. So I'm going to do that right here. What's the derivative of the velocity for Q? So here it is, the derivative. So I'm going to call that acceleration. I'm going to take the derivative, 2T minus 8. And then I'm going to plug in 2. I don't have to, but I do. So it's neg And there's no units, are there? So the answer is just negative 4. What's the next part? Is the speed, again, see this question over and over again, right? Is it increasing or is it decreasing at 2? So how do I know that? Well, the acceleration is negative. What's the velocity at 2? And so if I plug in 2 for the velocity, I get 2 squared and then 8 times 2 and then plus 15. So take a moment. You do need to know that number. That's 19, right? 4 and 15. 19 take away 16, 3. So what do you notice is that they have opposite signs. So we could write that down. The velocity and acceleration have opposite signs at t equals 3. No, at t equals 2. Therefore, the particle is decreasing, right? The part for the speed is decreasing. There is good. Perfect. All right, last question. Find the position of the particle Q the first time it changes direction. So Q is here. The first time it changes direction is at what number? 3. So can you find the position at t equals 3? That's what I'm looking for. So what do I know already about uh, q? So the position for q, what does it start at? 5 plus, we're going to integrate. At what time is it 5? 0. And what am I looking for? 3. And then I'm going to integrate the velocity. This is uh, for q, which is uh, t squared minus 8t plus 15. So there's the setup. No calculator. And then how would you do it? So you actually have to integrate this. So that would be add 1 to the exponent and divide. Add 1 to the exponent and divide. And we're going from 0 to 3. We don't have to simplify here just to remind you about that. So I'm going to plug in 3. I'm not simplifying it. I'm just going to plug in 3. 
and then I'm going to subtract parentheses and now when I plug in zero I'm looking at it like zero 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 it's zero right like I don't need it and it's over so there's the position and that's all you need you don't need to simplify it at all and that's all of it hey you did your homework I am super proud of you thank you for not giving up on word problems and that you know you can do it I know you can do it Mr. G Math over now till next time